When you start a print-on-demand business, you begin to accumulate lots of files. You may notice you're starting to accumulate quite a bit of mock-up images, all of your design files, as well as maybe size charts, color charts. And something that I struggled with in the beginning of starting my print on demand business was how do I actually organize all of these different files so that I can easily find them. So in this video, I wanted to break down exactly how I've organized all of the files that I use in my print on demand business and give you a couple little tips and tricks for you to be able to do the same. If you are new to my channel, my name is Taylor and my channel is focused on all things Etsy and print on demand. If those are two things that interest you, I would love for you to boop the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on any future videos like this. I primarily use two design softwares to create all of my designs for my print on demand business. And those two softwares are Canva and Kittle. I mainly use Canva for creating all of my listing images, as well as storing all of the files that I need for my print on demand business. What I've done here is create a sample of how I go about organizing all of these different images in my Canva account. When you first log into Canva, this is typically what you see. You can see all of your most recent designs. And for me, that is where I often would just scroll through and try to find what I was looking for. But that ended up being really time consuming, as well as there were times that I just simply couldn't find what I was looking for. And then I would have to end up recreating it which was also super time consuming. And so what has helped me is I've organized my Canva account into three main folders. You can see those off to the left here where I have a folder for mockups, folder for designs, and a folder for my listing templates. How I've done that is I started off by going into projects and going over to the folders tab. Now these three that I've already created act as my main folders. And then I also have some subfolders within each of these as well. For example, if I were to go into the designs folder, you'll see here that I have two examples of two different niches that I've organized the designs by as well. In the camping folder, if I click into it, you can see I have two designs that I uploaded in. These are from Creative Fabrica, but I'm easily able to find these designs here if I needed to find them just in a quick pinch. To go back to my designs folder, I can just click designs right here, and then I can click into my professions folder, which again, I've also broken down into two different professions as examples here. So you can really start to kind of sub niche down within your folders so that you have everything in a very manageable and easy to find way. Now, if I go all the way back out to projects, how you create a folder in Canva is just by clicking add new, and then you're going to want to click folder. From there, you have the ability to name your folder. Once you have created a folder, something that I recommend doing is clicking on the little three dots next to the folder that you created. And you want to make sure that it is starred. So for this example, right now I already have this starred. So I'm going to unstar it really quick. And then I'm going to click those three dots again. And now you can see where I have that star folder option. The reason that I recommend that is because when I did that, you can see off to the left, that is going to show up here in my starred folders. Why that's super helpful is because when I am on the home screen of Canva, I'm going to be able to see all of my starred folders off to the left, which makes them super easy to access and grab less clicks, just making it a little bit more streamlined. The other folder that has really helped me is my mockups folder. So this is where I have broken down into different product types that I have mockups for. So you can always create a new folder here as well. If you were offering a new product type in your business and you have new mockups that you wanted to store in a really safe place. For example, I have my Gilded 18,000 folder. I can click into that and you can see I have five different mockups that are stored here. Now, something that is important to know and more so with your design folders where you can start to accumulate a lot of images, a folder in Canva is going to store up to 200 designs or files within it. So if you are at a point where you are approaching that 200 mark, just know that you are going to want to create a secondary folder for that specific category or maybe niche that you are creating designs for. Because what will happen is if you surpass that 200 limit, it is going to start deleting some of your old work. So just be mindful of that if you are creating a lot of designs and you have them all stored in one folder. 
The third folder that I have found really has helped me with organization and also just streamlining my listing process is having a listing templates folder. Now in my listing templates folder, this is where I would create templates that I can reuse anytime I'm looking to list a specific product type. So for example, here with this Gildan 18,000 sweatshirt template, you'll see here, if I go to the grid view, I have all of the different listing images that I would use to create a new listing on Etsy for this product type. I have a few different mock-up images, a color chart, size chart, some washing instructions, and a little discount. What I love about this is generally I'm pretty consistent with the mock-up images that I use from listing to listing. Here and there I might swap out some of the mock-ups for a specific color if there's just a specific design that I feel would look better or present better on a particular color, but generally I try to keep it pretty consistent. And then what's really great about having this template is when I'm ready to swap out a design and upload a new listing on Etsy, all I have to do is a little drag and drop. Say for example, I have this teacher design that I am looking to upload to this sweatshirt drag it over and it is going to immediately swap out the previous design. So I can do that for every single design that I have and that really speeds up my listing process. I just scroll through and just like that, now all of my designs have been replaced. I just have to export these and they're ready to go. And another little hack, because you may have noticed when I brought in this design, you'll see that this design, it actually tucks in under the sleeve on this particular mock-up. And if you're wondering how I did that, all I did was actually duplicate the mock-up and remove the background. So I'll show you in real time. This is actually the duplicated mock-up. So I'm going to delete that. You can see if I were to put the design on this particular sweatshirt, just like this, it overlaps the sleeve there, which doesn't make it look real. And that's not what we want. We want our mock-ups to look as authentic to the actual product that the customer is going to receive. So what I'm going to do is just click my mock-up. I can click this button to duplicate it. And then I'm going to click edit photo and background remover. Once I have done that, I'm going to click these three little lines and I am going to actually erase everything except for the sleeve. So I'm going to erase that scrunchie, erase this top part. And then here's where it does get a little bit tedious. I am going to just click and then I'm going to drag this right along the sleeve here. Now, I like to take little breaks and unclick because that is going to save the progress I have made just in case I'm dragging it along and I sneeze, right? And something happens and makes a mistake and then I have to restart. So just a little unclick here and there just to make sure that I have all of my work saved and that looks good enough to me. And then all I have to do is just line it back up. So that's a quick little hack. Hopefully that helps with any mock-ups that you might be working with that have different folds or uh, different elements within them, like this one that has sunglasses and things like that, that you ever want to just modify so that it looks very authentic. Now say your Canva is full of designs, full of images, full of mockups, full of all of these different things that you've used as resources in your print on demand business, and you're looking to start to organize it. How you can actually go about that is starting in your projects and you are going to start by creating your folders. Again, you want to label them in a way that's going to make the most sense for you. This is what has personally worked for me. So feel free to steal this method as well. But then back on the homepage, once you have all of your folders, you may have tons of pre-existing images and designs that you want to go and organize and place into those folders. You can actually go back and add any of your pre-existing images into your folders that you've created. So say, for example, I have this teacher design here. The first thing that is very important to do is to actually label your designs. You want to label them in a way that is going to make them very search friendly. So thinking about what you might type type in, in your Canva account to actually find this design again. So I'm going to just name this teacher flower design. And now all I have to do to add this to my professions folder is I can just click file, save to folder, and then I can see all of my recent, or I can just go by all, and I can actually go into my designs, professions, and I do have a teacher folder specifically. So I can just click save and that has added this design to that folder. 
If you learned one new thing in this video, do me a favor and push the like button down below. And if you learned two new things and you haven't done so already, be sure to boop the subscribe button down below. Let me know in the comments down below if you found this video helpful and comment this secret emoji so that I know that you made it to the end of this video. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.